guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate you to the next level in your life. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Listen, Easter, let me tell you about Easter. Easter was honestly a time of accusation. Jesus, who was uh, all about doing good, he healed the sick, he opened blind eyes, he raised the dead, uh, he would show up into cities where people were possessed with demonic forces, and he would show up on the scene, change lives, transform lives, and the same people that were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, are now exchanging the shout of praise to a shout of crucify him, crucify him. And these accusations were going around saying that he's a deceiver, he's a liar, he, he's all about bad, etc., etc. And I started thinking about just accusations. I don't know about you, but in my 41 years of living, I have been accused of stuff that was not true. I was innocent. I think everyone here at some point has been accused at the workplace, maybe in family relations, friendships, whatever, and you were innocent. But then there's also people here that you, you, you and I, okay, let's just keep it real. The struggle is real and so is God, that we have committed crimes or, or sins. We've committed things that are, that are ungodly and, and we were fully guilty, but God so loved you and I that he sent his son to shut the mouth of the lion named Satan and stop all the accusations so that we can have freedom in him. And so I want to start my, my first Bible verse found in Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. And here's what it says. It says, then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation. Everybody say that, now salvation. Now salvation, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God, it says, and the power of his Christ have come. I want you to know that the power of Christ is here right now. If you need healing, it's here. His power is present to heal you. And it goes on to say, and the power of his, of, of his Christ have come for the accuser, let me say the accuser, of our brethren, which is Satan. And I know that that's not a popular, you know, what, uh, sermon to talk about when you're talking about Satan. But let's keep it real. The whole purpose of God sending his son was to destroy every single work of the devil over your life. And so though it may not be popular preaching in churches nowadays, it's the reality. And so many times we're looking at the accuser of men, not realizing that beyond the people that are accusing you and I, it goes way deeper. There's an accuser who can't stand you, who hates you, who wants to see you destroyed, who wants to see you messed up, tore up from the neck up, and his name is Satan. And so God is like, hey, we're going to stop the noise. We're going to stop these accusations. And look what it says. And so he says, the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. So just picture this. Here you have Satan, that little weasel. And he's standing before God and he's saying, you know what, look at Mauricio. Look, you know what, he hasn't been as faithful as you thought he would be, God. And he accuses you and I. And he starts telling God about every single fault. He begins to tell God about every single flaw. He begins to share with God about every single disobedient act that you had. But guess what? God said, you know what, shut up. And he kicked him out of heaven. And, of course, we know that he's, he's obviously right here on earth causing destruction. But, but here's the truth. But be of good cheer because Jesus has already overcome every single act of the enemy. Are you with me today? And so as I started studying, I started thinking, wow, the message of the cross has a twofold message. Everybody say message. You see, there's two sides to the cross. There's the front where Jesus is right there with open arms saying, you know what, I love you this much. And yes, though he was experiencing some agony, some pain, some suffering, Jesus still looked at you and me. And here was the message of Jesus. He said, you know what, I still want to reach you. That's the message of Easter today. I still want to reach you. And you know what? There are people here today that you already have a relationship with God, but somehow you've just kind of you've, you've, you've just kind of taken a step back. You've, you've gotten a little weary, a little bit tired, and, and, and you're just not active with God, and, and you've just been a little bit far away from God. But today Jesus is saying, I still 
want to reach you. I still want to love you. I still want you to experience the grace that I have for your life. And so on the flip side of that cross is also a message that Jesus has for the devil. And you know what that message is? He's saying to the, to the devil, he's saying, Satan, here's the deal. Hell cannot have them. Hell cannot have them. I know it's not a popular subject either, talking about hell. I know that many times when I sit with people and talk to people, they say things like this, like, wow, if God is so good, why does he send people to hell? First of all, God created hell for Satan and all his demons. That's just the truth. God does not send people to hell. People choose to go there. God created heaven for every single child, every single son and daughter of God, and that's who you are. And that's a choice that we get to make. Isn't it wonderful that God will never force himself in your life? God will never make you love him. He'll never make you serve him. God will always show himself faithful in your life. Even when you wanted nothing to do with God, God still shows up in your life because he loves you. He has a twofold message. The message is, I still want to reach you, but he also has a message for the devil, you can't have them. That's the Jesus that we serve today. That's the one that we're celebrating here today. It was Calvary that God gave divine messages to both you and Satan. And he says the accusations are going to stop, and so we know how that worked. Jesus is now on the cross, and he's being crucified. He's innocent. He was a man in the form of flesh. He... He, he was innocent of any crime, but of course they crucified him. Next we know that they placed him in a tomb. And then you know what, for three days straight, it goes silent. Maybe this is your silent Sunday where nothing's happening. You feel empty. You feel lost. You feel confused. I'm telling you that when you feel that God is silent, God is actually doing some things, working some things out behind the scenes. While, while Jesus was in that tomb, of course, he took that time to go down to Hades, which is called hell, and he put the whoop down on Satan. Took the keys away from him that held you and I in bondage in sin. And then he walked in with boldness and unlocked those, those prison doors and said, these are my kids and they're all going to be set free. That's the power and the love of Jesus Christ. He is for you, not against you today. Maybe you're here today not really knowing God. Maybe you're someone that has experienced maybe the wrong kind of God through a Christian who has misled you. But let me tell you something. I have realized that people don't have an issue with God. People have an issue with Christians. It's a quiet Pentecostal church this morning. And so Jesus, we know that he's in this tomb and, and God said, you know what, Satan, you, you thought you had him. But guess what? He had resurrection life in the tomb. We know that he not only, that he not only uh, was raised from the dead, but he got out. It, the tomb had a rock that was rolled over this tomb and kept him silent. But Jesus, in, in, in all the greatness and power of the Holy Spirit, was raised from the dead. And then God removed the stone. You see, there are some things in your life right now that God wants to remove from you. There are three things that Jesus did for you and I. And I think that it's important for you to know this because if not, you'll continue to allow the accuser to accuse you of things that maybe you have done, that God wants to show you grace in, but you have to get the revelation of the power of the cross of Jesus Christ. Number one, three things he did. Number one, he removed your transgressions. Do you know that when he removed your transgression, he rolled away the stone? What's transgression? It's an action. It's an action of a sin that you intentionally do, knowing that you went beyond the boundaries that you should never have gone to. And God's saying, hey, listen, through my son, I'm going to remove those transgressions. Number two, he will remember your sins no more. Isn't that good news? Now, what are you saying, pastor? Are you saying that, like, he's never going to remember my sins? Yeah, no. He never forgets your sin, but he'll never recall it back at you. How many times have we said we forgive an individual person, but we always recall what they did to us wrong, and we always bring it and throw it in their face and accuse them of what they did to us? Jesus said, hey, listen, I want to remember your sins no more. I, I, won't, I won't forget what you did because God knows what you did, but he won't recall what you did when he forgives you. Number three, he releases, everybody say releases. 
He releases you from your iniquities. What are my iniquities? Well, we know that sin is our offense. It's our crime. The iniquities is the evil attitude of our heart. God is saying, I want to release you. I want to release you. I want to set you free from having this attitude of being okay with sinning. God wants to restore us. God wants to reconcile us back in relationship with the Father. That was the whole purpose of Jesus. It was his purpose to come and bring us back in relationship with God. Jesus did not die for religion. Jesus died for a relationship with you and I. That is his passion. That is his heart. That is his desire. He wants to bring resurrection life into your life. And so as I've been preparing for Easter, I started thinking, how can I bring this message? What, what point of view can I give them? And I found a verse found in song, the Song of Solomon. We know that Solomon was one of the wisest men on earth, right? He wrote uh, most of the book of Proverbs. And he writes this, 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 this almost like a love letter. The Song of Solomon is all about the love. It's a love story of Jesus for you and me. And so look at this. In, in chapter 2, verse 1 through 2, it says, I am. Everybody say, I am. And so Jesus first and immediately starts with his identity. He knows who he is. You see, when the devil comes to accuse you, he comes to strip you from who you are in Christ Jesus. And so Jesus starts with, hey, listen, this is who I am. This is my identity. And he says, I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. Like a lily among thorns. Everybody say lily among thorns. So, of course, here you have some lilies. You know it. And here you have some thorns. And we know that the thorn that Jesus wore as a crown on his head was, 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 not, was not an easy thing to go through. But I think that... that God wanted his son to experience this great suffering so that you would realize how much God loved you, that he was willingly ready to go through all the suffering in order for you to see how much he loved you. You know what? When people say, I love you, words are not enough. Action is everything. And Jesus went to action for you and I. And so he says this. He says, like a lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. What is he saying? It's kind of like, like Jesus basically telling a love story of a, a uh, uh, um, what do you call the people that get married? Uh, lost my train of thought. Um, he's the, uh, the groom. Thank you. He's the groom and you're the what? The bride. And he says, you are my lily among thorns. Now, I'm a man's man. You know what? I don't want anyone to ever call me a lily. You know what I'm saying? So don't ever call me Lily. Now, Jesus can call me Lily because he's a man's man, right? And so Jesus basically says, hey, listen, you're, you're, like, you're like a lily and, and you're among thorns. And there's something powerful about that because as I started just reading about what did he feel, I wonder what Jesus felt when these thorns were upon him. I wonder what he felt as these thorns uh, uh, were being pressed down into his skull. What did that feel like? And you know what? Actually, there's a wonderful description that really just begins to make me think about how much he loves us. And here's what I found. When the crown of thorns came down upon Jesus, he experienced, and you know what? I may torture this, this disease name, but he experienced and felt this thing called uh, trigeminal uh, neuralgia. And it's a very, very painful disease. And here's what it says. There would be agonizing pain all over the front of his face and the sides of his face. Okay, agonizing. There would also be agonizing pain inside of the ears. And it would have been the equivalent of having someone come up with a knife and stabbing a person on the face. This is... What Jesus is saying, he's saying, in the midst of your pain, Jesus says that I see the potential in your life. What you see as a mess, Jesus sees as a potential for change and transformation. He says, you are the lily among thorns. And I really want to talk to you about this, this whole subject on thorns. Because you know what? Every single one of us have experienced some form of pain. No one here has less or more pain than someone else. Pain is pain. I will never downsize anyone's pain. Everyone's pain looks different. For example, you know what, my niece, you know what, she was killed 
uh, about three years ago. And it was a very painful thing that my family and I experienced. But there's something about Jesus saying, you are, you are lilies among thorns. You see, today I know that because of Christ Jesus, and my sister posted this on Facebook yesterday, uh, she was remembering how, how because of God's faithfulness that, that now my, my niece is in heaven. As a matter of fact, she came to this church three months before she was killed. And, uh, and I thank God that Jesus made a place for her. But there's something powerful that amongst the thorns uh, and the pain and the suffering that God will never waste anything that you and I experience. But he will turn it around and use it for something good. Since the death of my niece, my sister has ministered to countless families whose children have either passed away or have been killed. Countless. And so my niece, the, the death that she experienced, now I know that she's already pain free. She's in heaven. I know she's in heaven. I'm going to see her again. As a matter of fact, my sister said uh, yesterday on her post, she's like, I can't wait to be reunited with my daughter one day. But let me tell you something. In the midst of the, the, the lily amongst the thorns, my sister has been willing and ready to help people from all walks of life who are broken and hurting and experiencing so much pain. And that's what Jesus is saying. That though you may be experiencing the thorn of pain, like what are you feeling right now? Because you know what, we're all feeling different kind of things that we experience through stuff that we go through. You may have, have, have felt the thorn of the nobody, the thorn of the nothing's happening, the thorn of I'm worthless, I'm no good. There's also the thorn where you feel like there's the relic of the past. Do you know that the devil always reminds you of your past? He's so faithful to remind you of your past. But Jesus, all he does is he reminds you of your future. And it's a good future with him. And that's the accuser of the brethren. He wants to remind you of all the past, your failures, your faults. And so many times what happens is when we experience the thorn of different things, for example, there are people here all day today that have experienced divorce. The thorn of divorce. Divorce is painful. But so many times we begin to identify our life with divorce. See, divorce is an event. It's not who you are. Many times we experience the thorn of disease and sickness. I've experienced cancer, okay? And you know what? The enemy wanted to accuse me so much and say things like, you're going to die. <laughs> you're not going to live. You're not going to make it. And when I was experiencing the severe pain, it's almost like Satan wanted to make sure that he would whisper in my ears in those dark Hours of the night when everything was quiet, where everything was silent, I would hear him say things like, you're not going to make it. You're going to die. Where is God in this whole thing? Look, you've served God all your life and this is what he gave you. But let me tell you something. That's the accuser of the brethren. Satan comes to bring condemnation, shame, and guilt. Jesus comes to bring life and life more abundantly. And it's his grace that we begin to experience. So don't coexist with your pain. Don't coexist and identify. Don't let the devil begin to create a new identity in you in divorce, in sickness, in failures, in flaws, in loneliness. Don't start taking that identity because Jesus said, I give you a new identity in me. Come on, he gave you an identity of a victor, not a victim. That's what God wants to do. So we don't have to fight from a place of trying to fight to get victory, but we fight from a place of victory. In Christ Jesus. And that's what he wants for all of us. And so the thorn is, it's legit, it's real. But that was the purpose of the resurrection, guys. The purpose of the resurrection of Jesus Christ was so that you and I would be transformed. He wants to transform our lives. He wants to change our lives. He wants to give us this new identity in him. As a matter of fact, when you think about both the lily and the thorns, man, what a contrast, huh? I mean... Yeah, they may be completely, I mean, we go from talking about beautiful lilies to bam, he throws in a thorn inside of it. And so many times we think about Christianity like Christianity is, is like lilies in the garden of heaven. Heck to the no, man. When you come to Christ, it's, it's, it's on. You go through stuff. So if anyone ever tells you, hey, when you receive Christ, everything is going to be so much better. You'll never experience any pain. That is a lie from hell. You will experience pain. You will experience challenges. But, but here's what Jesus said. He says, but be of good cheer because I've overcome every single pain, past, present, and future for you. 
And so he says, you're a lily amongst the thorns. And he's saying, hey, listen, I see that though you're in the midst of going through pain, there's potential in you. There's a lily on the inside of you. God says, I can take the ugly and make something beautiful out of it. God says, I can take your ashes and I want you to trade that in and I'll give you beauty for those ashes. God says this, I will give you, I'll, I'll give you a ministry out of your misery. That's what Jesus is about. He's always about exchange. He's always about transformation. And, and those thorns that, that, that we, we talk about in the Bible, I mean, all throughout the scripture, Jesus talks about thorns. It's, it's very interesting. As a matter of fact, he gives a parable in, 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 in the New Testament about the, the, the parable of the, the sower who went out to sow seeds. And remember it says, and some fell upon the wayside and some fell upon good ground. And then one of the verses says, and some fell amongst thorns. Why does he say that? Here's why. You know what? No matter what you're going through right now, God loves you. And though sometimes we're, we're dropped in a place where there's thorns, why thorns? Well, thorns, what do they do? They choke the life out of you. They choke the peace out of your life. It literally comes to choke everything that is good from God inside of you. But God says, hey, listen, even though you're in the midst of thorns, I still have a lily inside of you. I can do something amazing in the worst condition, circumstance, or situation that you're facing. That is the goodness of God. That is the message of Easter. He's saying, I will deliver you. And guess what? At some point, you also have to make a choice because I know that there are people here today. Listen, this is service number one, two, three, four, four services already. No, Friday we had two. Y'all, y'all weren't here. <laughs> y'all missed Good Friday. But, but here, here's, 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 here's the truth. In, in the last four services, approximately 40 people have made decisions to give their life to Jesus Christ. But, but that's a personal decision because he's not going to force you today. You're, you're probably here and you're saying, I'm just here because it's Easter. Well, you know, you thought you were here because it's Easter, but really God brought you here today. You're not here by circumstance or, 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 or by accident. Like God knew that you would be here today at Elevate Church. I know it's a, you know, uh, you know weird, crazy Latino preacher, but that's okay. But, but here's the truth. Here's what needs to happen. Numbers 33 verse 55 says this. It says, but if you do not. Everybody say, but if you do not. See, there's an if in your life. If you do not receive him, then you, you'll keep experiencing the things you experience. He says, but if you do not drive out. That's a choice. We choose to drive out the things that we're experiencing, the sins that you and I commit. Come on, he wants us to drive out the pain that you and I experience, but you don't drive it out by yourself. Jesus came so that he would help and bring life to you. So he says, we are to drive out the inhabitants of the land before you. He says, then, everybody say then. then. See, when you finally decide, man, I am going to drive this sucker out. I am, I, am, I am making a decision to follow Jesus Christ. Here's what he says, and then. It shall be that those whom you let remain shall be irritants in your eyes and thorns. Everybody say thorns. In your sides. What's he saying? He's saying this. How much longer are you just going to look at your life and just see this destruction take you out? How much longer are you just going to keep looking at your life and feeling like, you know what, there's so much disappointment. How much longer are you going to keep seeing your life and losing vision? Come on, sometimes we lack vision because we're leaking vision. Jesus is the only one that can patch you back up. He's the only one that can get you back afloat. He's the only one that can cast you out so that you can keep going and release you into destiny. That's what he's saying. But he's saying, at what point are you going to stop being irritated by the things that you see? At what point are you going to decide to make a change? So many times we're just saying, God, well, I'm just waiting on you. God's like, man, I'm waiting on you. Right? And so he wants to help us, but we have to respond. And so he goes on to say, and thorns in your sides, and they shall harass you in the land where you dwell. I don't know about you, but I am so sick and tired of the enemy harassing me in the land that God has given me. I'm done with harassment. I need Jesus. I need him to help me. 
I need him to give me the strength to keep going. As a matter of fact, if you read in the book of John, Jesus says this. He says, without the Father, all the works that I do, I would not be able to do them. And then he goes on to say, and he says, and guess what? And without me, you and I can do nothing. We need Christ. That's the message of Easter. And the apostle Paul. You know, one of the greatest disciples, he wrote two-thirds of the, of the New Testament. He had this revelation. He went through something so painful uh, 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 as being a lily among thorns. And I'm almost done. I'm closing. You can come up now. Thank you. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10 says this. It says, or because of these surpassingly great revelations. Look, why couldn't he just say because of these great revelations? But he has to go drama surpassingly great revelations. He says, therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh. Now, mind you, God doesn't put, he doesn't place thorns in you. God, God gives life. He doesn't take life. God doesn't, God doesn't put pain in your life so that you can start being an obedient person to him. God doesn't do that. You know what? Paul makes it very clear. And, and once again, when you, when you preach in churches about Satan, it's not popular. People don't want to hear that. But here's the truth. You have an enemy, an adversary. And Jesus came to deliver you and I from him. He came to deliver, deliver us from destruction. The things we go through, the sins we go through, they're simply just baits that Satan has thrown at us. And then we take the bait and then now he comes to destroy us. John 10.10 10 says the thief does not come except to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, but I came. Listen, in the midst of your destruction, he says, but I showed up to give you life and life more abundantly. Where there's destruction, Jesus is present to help you and me. Where there is pain, Jesus is there to alleviate and to bring rest to your soul. What's your soul? Your mind, your will, your emotions. I love this. And Paul says, a messenger of what? Satan. He says, a messenger of Satan tormented me. Maybe you're going through some torment in your mind right now. Maybe there's torment in your heart. Maybe there's torment of your future. Maybe you feel like, How, how's my life going to look like now? How am I going to support my family? How am I going to support my kids? How am I going to move further? Maybe you're someone that you're, you're, you're already past a certain age and, and opportunity and you're just like, man, why did I waste all those years? I could have been so much further. That's tormenting. Maybe you're someone who, who is single and you're just like, will I ever get married? Stop being tormented. As a matter of fact, you know what Jesus said? He taught another message. He says, stop worrying about today. For today, I mean tomorrow, for today has its own problems. He said, just look at the lilies in the field. He says, don't you see them grow? Stop worrying. He said, put your trust back in my plan. See, many of us can say, I believe in God. But not many of us can say, but I trust his plan. Because his plan doesn't look like the plan you thought it would be. And so it says, Paul says, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, Paul. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then you're strong in me. Please don't take this the wrong way. But God will never waste a thorn in your life. He won't waste it. You know what he does? He takes your thorn and he uses it to show the devil that you thought you had him. You thought you had her. But guess what? You can't have them. He will not waste one thorn. He will not waste one painful story. He will not waste one circumstance. He will not waste anything that you experience. You know what? After I, after I had cancer and experienced all the pain and, and lost a year of my life, one whole year of my life I lost. But guess what? It wasn't a waste. A waste in my eyes 
but not in his eyes. For that one year, God was building character. God was building a story. God was preparing me to, 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 to have me now have a testimony to help other people that have been experiencing cancer. I mean, God has given me so many opportunities to share what he did in my life. And so God will never waste your pain. Maybe right now you're identifying with your, your stuff, your circumstance. Well, guess what? Stop coexisting with it and today receive Jesus in your heart. Because he's the only one that can bring you a new identity and it's being like him, in his image, and in his likeness. And so Paul, he's saying, I was given a thorn in the flesh. And he was very clear, this was an attack against my life. It was supposed to bring me destruction. Paul's thinking about this. But I love what Paul, how he responds. He said, I refuse to look at my thorn through the eyes of destruction. That's what we have to do. Stop looking at the thorn through the eyes of destruction and start looking at the thorn through the eyes of Jesus who sees a lily among the thorns. That's the goodness of God. He took the thorn of grief and he turned it into a thorn of grace. Paul saying, God took my misery and he gave me a ministry and he began to preach the gospel. Nowhere in the scriptures does it say that Paul was healed completely from the thorn, but it does say that he had grace to keep him going. And he finished his race. And God's going to help you keep going and you will finish your race. Because what is the thorn, what does that look like? He called him a messenger of Satan. Listen, many times Satan will send you messages like this. He'll say, God doesn't love you. He'll send messages like this. He didn't even care about you. He'll say things like this, you know what, if God was so good, then why does he let bad things happen to good people? Do you know that those are all whispers from the devil? You know why? Because he's so great at accusing you that he wants you to become so great at accusing him. Why? Because he wants you to be angry at God. He wants you to be mad at God. Trust me, I get it. The struggle is real, but God is much more real than my struggle. I got mad when my niece was killed. I was angry for a moment. That's okay. God can handle your drama and your trauma. He loves you. He knows how to deal with, with those things in your life. He's not, he's not ashamed of you or me. He just wants to help. He wants to heal. He wants to restore. And so all of a sudden, Satan, the messenger of destruction, will whisper in your ears things that, you know what, are lies. But that's the message of Jesus Christ. That's the message of Easter. Jesus is going to turn your thorn of cursing into a thorn of blessings. Jesus is going to take the crown of thorns and give you the crown of righteousness. He can make you right. Here's a few facts about lilies, which is interesting. You wonder why does God talk about lilies? Because both thorn and lilies, they're associated with Easter. But here's some fun facts. A lily is very fruitful. As a matter of fact, one root on a lily can put forth 50 bulbs. That's pretty fruitful. When you think about what Christ did on the cross, when he died for you and me, he did a fruitful work. And guess what? 2,000 years later, the Bible is still the number one best-selling book in the world. He is fruitful. Number two, a lily is the tallest of flowers and yet hangs its head down. When I think about the lily and the cross, I think about Jesus. When he said, it is finished, his head went down. And in all his greatness, he showed great humility even to the point of death. What is he saying? He's saying, Mauricio, humility is the key to your victory. Humble yourself. The third thing, according to ancient teachings, lilies could be used to restore a lost voice. Come on, maybe you've lost your voice for God. Maybe you've lost your shout for Jesus. Or maybe you're just lost right now. You're lost with confusion. You're lost in pain. Well, guess what? You're the lily among thorns. And he says, I will help you recover what you've lost. What the devil took from you, God says, I will give it back to you. Satan will have to repay you seven times more. 
he will restore it. It also says that it not only restores the loss of voice, but it helps faintness. Maybe today you're weary, you're tired, you're exhausted. Well, guess what? Man, you're the lily among thorns and he can bring life back into you again. He can make you be that dead plant and he can bring you back to life. Or all of a sudden, man, you're looking cute, beautiful, awesome, strong, looking so amazing, looking so fly. Look at your never be and just tell him you're fly. Yeah. Look, it's also used, the lily was also used, and, and it and it's continues to be used in different parts of the world. You know what? To heal the liver. And isn't that so interesting? The liver of all things. You see, it's the liver where the enemy comes for to take life. But Jesus says, in all essence of this lily, he says. I use lilies to remind you of this, that I am the great physician. I am the healer, the restorer, the deliverer. I am the provider. I am the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And nothing will change my mind concerning you. Stop letting the devil accuse you of all your lies. Those of you that are watching on live stream, God loves you. And I pray that the same presence of God that we have in this house is touching you, whether you're at home, in a hospital bed, whether you're in a prison, wherever you're at, I want you to know that God loves you. He's for you. He's not mad at you. And today, you also will have an opportunity to receive Jesus. He is for you. He loves you. I need to keep saying it. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. That goes for everyone here. He loves you. He's not mad at you, but he's madly in love with you. That's his grace. You're not going to quit. You're not going to give up. And here's the truth again. Why, why would he forgive me my sins? Well, he says in Hebrews 8, 12, for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. This is what I'm offering you today. He's saying you are a lily among thorns because of my grace and my love for you. I am willing to forgive you on Easter Sunday and to restore my relationship between you and I. Would you please bow your head, close your eyes. If you're here today, please know this, that every single one of us has an expiration date. No one knows when. No one knows the hour, the time, the date. But at some point, we're all going to die at some point in life. But there's, there's no need to be afraid. You know what? When I was sick with cancer, the doctors gave me a 50-50% chance to live or die. But I can, I can be so honest with you. I wasn't afraid of death. You know why? Because even if I were to die, I would still win. Why? Because I'd be in heaven. But I knew that God was not through with me. And I prayed and prayed and prayed. And I said, God, please deliver me and I'll do whatever you want but save my life and I fought in faith and you know what God did a great miracle in my life he delivered me from that but let me tell you something not even I as someone who is already in ministry traveling the world preaching the gospel bringing financial aid all over different parts of the world not even I was promised tomorrow I'm here to tell you today that you are not promised tomorrow. Today is the hour where Jesus is saying, hey, listen, I want to forgive you. I want to heal you. I want to restore you. I want you to know that you are the lily amongst thorns, but I will take your mess and make a message out of it. I will take your ashes and give you beauty for that. God's saying, I want to restore you. I want you to be in relationship with me. When I count to three, your hand's going to go up. Why do I have to lift my hand? Because you know what? God wants you to choose him. God wants you to be bold for him. If you can be bold for him inside of a church where we experience God, then I know that you will be bold for Jesus out in the open public. God wants to see you respond because he wants you to not only accept him, but he wants to know that you really meant it from your heart. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. You see, Jesus is the entrance to heaven. He's the door for you and I. And without him, we can do nothing. If today's message impacted you in any way, and you would like to help us spread the gospel to others by giving a financial gift, please text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed as yours was today.